I try to understand the logic behind freshwater aquascaping and apply it to my tank. Of course, there are two very distinct worlds and dealing with corals and plants poses different challenges. In what concerns the placement of corals, there's two things that are always on my mind. Our tanks tend to have much more coral diversity than a natural reef, and for me, the one of each look doesn't look coherent or harmonious. The other thing is something I heard the master aquascaper say. If you have lots of plants on the left, put a little of that plant also on the right. My tank has lots of repeated corals and I'm going to try to go through all of them. The most preeminent coral in my tank are the Milka Stylos. They are arguably one of the most hardy SPS and have a very rare color, at least in a healthy corals. The tips are white. I mean this for the long run and the longer is the race, the larger the odds that you will fall. This coral is so hardy that I really need to fall hard on my face to break it. I had a small colony two years ago on top of this rock and when I set up this new tank a few branches were broken in the move and I used them to create another colony. One year ago I wanted to see if they could be near the bubble tips and I placed a small frag here. It worked, the anemones moved away. Later I create a pillar at the back and I placed some branches on top. Just a few weeks ago I placed another tall pillar at the back behind the Magnifica and although I thought about putting other corals on top, I knew that the coral that would help unify the whole scape was the Milka. The right side of the tank is still undeveloped when compared to the rest and it doesn't look well integrated and my hope is that the Milka will bring it together. This Gorgonian looks like a Milka branch, so I placed it in front of one. Out of all the Acros, the Green Slimer is also one of the hardiest. It also has a bold color and these are the reasons I picked it. It has grown a lot and I began fragging the branches that were going towards the back and scattering them in different locations. I always loved the look of a staggered forest and that's what I'm hoping to create. Another big advantage of the staggerns, over all the other acros, is that they allow small fish to swim inside them. They can keep growing and they don't drop the swimming space of the fish as much as most other corals. I'm thinking that if I can place a green slimer at the back on the top left corner, it will help unify the tank. It's a challenge though, because it will have to find a way to live near anemones. I also have a teal slimer. I spoke about this in a previous video. Uh, having two corals with similar shapes and different colors creates what I call rich harmony. I also scattered it around the same areas I placed the green slimer. I'm not sold on the forest fire Monty. It's hardy, but as it grows, it's one of those corals that when they're large, they're just not as pretty as when they are a frag. The skeleton is also too fragile. This red dragon acro was one of the last additions to the tank and it's a calculated risk. It's one of those corals that you can't even look at it sideways or it will bleach. But it's a fast grower, has a beautiful dark burgundy color and a unique shape. I placed the frag on the other side of the valley so that I can call this the Red Dragon Valley. The orange Setosa Monti is a slow grower, but I used it as a way of scattering small patches of bright orange through the front of the tank. The Pavona Cactus is a SPS with a very unique growth pattern, forming very beautiful rose-like structures. I placed it in different locations, but it hasn't been growing well in the front, because there's not enough light. I like the dark front of the tank, and the two comets also prefer it that way. They're often right at the front because they don't appreciate bright light, and they feel safe there. This is a very mixed reef, and the anemones are a big part of it. There is a huge structure at the back covered in bubble tips. During the first year, 
every week or so I would find one or two rogue anemones, sometimes in places where I couldn't dislodge them. At some point I noticed it stopped happening and I think I only found one or two away from their colony over the last year. I am pretty sure that the three filefish are keeping them in check. I have seen them rip their tentacles around the colony and I guess that the anemones in the colony have been able to sustain the damage but the ones that stray too far and are isolated uh, just become easy targets. On the right side it's the home of the three clowns, the Magnifica anemone. Um, it's the first thing I do in the morning, I just check the tank and see if that anemone is still in place because it's huge and I know uh, that um, it has a huge potential to cause damage and real real damage in the tank. Not only to the corals but mostly to the fish if it dies. So it's an uh, uncalculated risk. The Goniopora's are another calculated risk, but a minor one. The red one is the focal point of the tank and is one of those corals that if something happens and it dies, it will create a big hole in the aquascape. I find it very temperamental and I'm enjoying it while it lasts. There are bright orange recordias scattered through the tank and they all originate from a large rock at the back. They've been with me for 14 years. This purple monty and crusts and plates, and there's a small plate beneath the Magnifica. There's also a bright green monty, I placed it at the back and it's finding its way towards the front. I also placed it on the right side of the tank, right at the front, and also on the new pillar at the back. I recently scattered frags of this orange monty all over the tank. It encrusts and plates, and it often plates down. I had two species of pallies, the utter chaos and some green ones. I was getting worried because the green ones were very invasive, until the three filefish decided to get high on pally toxins. They're driving them to extinction, and the utter chaos are filling in the void. The other chaos have been colonizing other parts of the tank and I have even found them growing on the areas where the green slimer meets the milka and both die. I have patches of green star polyps scattered through the tank and I hope I didn't make a mistake by letting the brown star polyps grow free on the right side of the tank. They create a beautiful starry area on the reflection of the right side. LPS have a hard time in this tank, I should feed them and I don't. These two micromooses don't die and don't grow. Well, I also don't provide them with enough light so how can they grow? The three last additions to the tank were three high hand hammers. I must file a complaint to the store because my filefish only like two of them, so there is only one in the tank. This cycloceres has been with me since I think 2006, yes, um, and it arrived on a piece of live rock as an hitchhiker. It grew, it detached from the rock and uh, it's here. I never know where to put it, um, well, it's here. Once again, thanks for watching.